Today we are going to play a video showing the Vice President of Guyana. Life is in danger after an alleged stabbing that took place in the Parliament building. Viewers and subscribers, welcome to Guyanese News, where we discuss news about Guyana and the diaspora. We are going to play a video. Before we start this video, if you're new to this YouTube channel and you want breaking, uncut, unfiltered news, subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section so you will be a part of the happenings in Guyana. So we are going to play this video where it is alleged that a member of parliament tried to attack the vice president of Guyana in parliament building. Recently, we know no Guyana is a developing country. So the security for the government need to step up because there is a rumor going around that a president guard stationed at the president office allegedly stole the wedding ring of the first lady. Just imagine, this is a police officer supposed to be guarding the president and he has been arrested and placed on close arrest at TSU for allegedly stealing the first lady wedding ring. Check out the video, then we are going to continue with more breaking and trending content. That was the video that you just saw on your screen where a member of parliament tried to touch the vice president but the news that is circulating is that the vice president of Guyana, Mr. Barajagio, was attacked. According to the news that is on newsroom right now, the member of parliament tried to stab the vice president in front of everybody live on camera in parliament building this story sounds very weird we don't know if it's true but a police investigation is taking place right now so the government of guyana need to step up the security because we're facing threat from venezuela already now we ordered a bodyguard stole the first lady wedding ring and this police officer who is a president guard was not prosecuted he was placed on close arrest at tsu where he's going to be opening gate after a time and work himself back into the police force this person should be arrested and charged but we did not hear this news on any major or any major news network we did not order about a president guard stealing the wedding ring of the forest lady but we get the news on video that a member of parliament tried to assassinate the vice president of guyana live on camera and there is a police investigation that is taking place right now so we need more security for the government of Guyana. We need to vet these people properly before they come in close proximity to the leadership of this country. So if you're new to this YouTube channel, 
make sure you subscribe thumbs up and leave a comment we are going to play another member of parliament from the ap and uk who is giving our opinion about the budget right now the old budget the debate is taking place in parliament but we are going to play this one particular person in this video who is sharing our opinion of where the budget should be going so check it out leave your comment and subscribe to Guyanese news for breaking and trending Guyanese content so before we start there is news circulating that in the parliament building the MP try to stab the vice president Barajabi. what you think about this is this true or the person is just a fan of the vice president and try to congratulate him this is Guyanese news subscribe like and share check this out thank you mr speaker mr speaker from the outset i want to condemn in the strongest possible terms the verbal abuse that continues to be meted out to female members of this house by members of the other side. Mr. Speaker, the disrespect of our women in politics must stop. Mr. Speaker, we have, we have to be determined to develop a better culture in this National Assembly. Calling a female colleague of mine a stripper is unacceptable. It is unacceptable, Mr. Speaker, and it must be condemned. And I'm deeply disappointed that my female colleagues on the other side did not see it fit to upbraid their colleague while she abused a female member of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, but I want them to know we're not going anywhere. We're here to stay. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you call us. You are not going to shut us up. And we will continue to be here to represent the people of Guyana. Mr. Speaker... Guyana's foreign policy, while it's always important, has assumed the place of paramountcy over the last year. One could not, however, tell this based on the delivery by my colleague across the floor yesterday, who spent 25 of his 30 minutes on everything else except foreign affairs. But Mr. Speaker, the world over is changing, a new order is emerging, and in this dynamic landscape of a changing global order, a state's foreign relations stands at the forefront of its strategic directions. Mr. Speaker, as a small country with a small population and a newfound prominence on the world stage as a petrol state and with a threat to our territorial integrity ever looming, Guyana needs now more than ever a sober, steady, and studied approach to our foreign policy. Amidst this evolving geopolitical current, Mr. Speaker, it is imperative for us as a nation to steadfastly adhere to our bedrock principles while deftly navigating the complexities of this new global order. This delicate balance, Mr. Speaker, demands astute diplomacy and a keen awareness of shifting allegiances and challenges. Because let us be clear, Mr. Speaker, this newfound interest in Guyana is not because of anything that we have done. It is because of what we have. That light, sweet crude that is being pumped 120 miles offshore, even as we speak, but we must remember, Mr. Speaker, that this resource is a finite one. And when it is gone, it is gone. And so cognizant of this reality, Mr. Speaker, we must soberly and vigilantly navigate these troubling times so that our children and future generations of Guyanese are able to inherit a Guyana great and free. To achieve this objective, Mr. Speaker, I propose five urgent priorities that must be addressed in the immediate term. One, identifying and effectively articulating Guyana's foreign policy, particularly in the context of the protection of our sovereignty and territorial integrity. Two, reshaping and enhancing our relationship with CARICOM countries. Three, employing astute diplomacy. Four, education and training and development of our diplomatic corps, and five, monitoring international migration into Guyana with particular emphasis on the Venezuelan migration crisis. 
identifying and effectively articulating our foreign policy. Mr. Speaker, the aim of foreign policy is to promote the national interest of the state, the maintenance and preservation of Guyana's sovereignty and territorial integrity is the foremost national interest and must be the number one objective of our foreign policy. I am not convinced, however, that this government, they were, Mr. Speaker, concurrently with the proceedings before the ICJ, there would have been a sustained effort to keep this matter of Venezuela's spurious claim on the forefront of all of our endeavors. It would have permeated every speech that we give. It would permeate every presentation that we make internationally. And we would be actively building alliances with groupings and states that could lend support to us. Mr. Speaker, this just-in-time and for-the-moment approach has to stop. It must end. Mr. Speaker, the protection of our territorial integrity requires eternal vigilance. Guyanese are well aware of that photograph of a CARICOM leader standing with a map of Venezuela, which included our Esequibo. This matter caused serious outrage, Mr. Speaker, and understandably so. But what is even more worrisome for me, Mr. Speaker, is that this photograph, along with an accompanying article written by one Ennio Malin, was published on the website of Venezuela's Ministry of Foreign Affairs in December 21 of 2022. Mr. Speaker, this question necessarily arises, therefore, who is monitoring the Venezuelan Ministry of Foreign Affairs website and communications on our behalf? Did they not see this photograph? And if they did, did they bring it to the attention of Tacuba Lodge? And if Tacuba Lodge was made aware, why was not there a diplomatic protest to that particular CARICOM leader? Mr. Speaker, and if they were aware as well, why, they not, why did they not consider this sufficient cause for pause in agreeing to that said CARICOM leader being an interlocutor in this Guyana-Venezuela controversy? Mr. Speaker, these are legitimate questions, and Guyanese deserve answers. Mr. Speaker, it is time that this government proffers to this nation a well-thought-out and well-articulated foreign policy, which will provide the roadmap for our engagement with the world, one that aligns our national interests, values, and goals, and offers a coherent and strategic approach to navigating the complexities of this new international order. To this end, Mr. Speaker, we would propose the establishment of a foreign relations council such a council would comprise our best minds across academia, foreign service professionals, civil society, and other professions, and would have the mandate to continuously review Guyana's foreign policy. In this manner, Mr. Speaker, we will ensure that our foreign policy positions are well thought out, well articulated, as would be the case in any properly functioning democracy. It must not be 